I'm going to explain to you in this video exactly what makes a great coach, exactly what traits they have, exactly what it is they do, and how you can do it too. Who is a great coach? If a guy is a great fighter, is he also a great coach? Of course not. I'm wrong? You think so? Mike Tyson's coach, Customato, was he a great fighter? No. Was John Danaher, the trainer of, among others, George St. Pierre, a great coach? Or was Greg Jackson ever a great fighter? Well, he trained John Jones, among other. All of these that I just mentioned have never been great fighters, or even fighters at all. So how is it possible that most of the great fighters that we have are actually trained by non-fighters. First, it is the skills and experience of a fighter. Skills and experience of a fighter don't necessarily come from fighting. A great fighter is made in the gym by a trainer with certain methods, which means you can know these methods. You can be experienced of knowing all these methods and exactly how they are trained and exactly what it is a fighter does without necessarily having to be one yourself, without ever having performed. A great coach has also undertaken the study of fighting. He is intellectually trained as well, whereas a fighter doesn't necessarily need to. Mind you, it does help. You don't need it, but a great coach does. Because the understanding of fighting of a coach needs to always be greater than that of a fighter. If you're going to lead them in a certain path, you need to understand the theories and concepts of that path. You need to study it. You need to actually read it. You need to be involved in the evolution of fighting. You know which path your sport is taking so that you can lead them in the most successful way. A great coach also has the skills to pass the knowledge on. Whereas a great fighter doesn't necessarily need to pass on any knowledge to anyone. He can be focused on his own thing and just train and sharpen his skills every day. But a coach needs to be able to pass on knowledge. When a fighter can see a kick and imitate a kick, and then perform it and make it a tool, a coach needs to communicate that tool, which is a kick. Everything I do, I need to be able to understand what it is my coach wants from me. A great coach also has specifically, and this is taught, this comes from experience in the gym. He has great methods. I mean, drills specifically. That's one of the first things you need as a fighter is specific drills. A drill is, for example, let's say a one-two. I give you a one-two, bop, bop, you respond with a one-two. And then we stand there and just do one-two, 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 and repeat, repeat, repeat. That's a drill. We do these things so that your mind gets used to a specific path or a specific movement. And a great coach has great drills. Drills that are just fluid and go from one technique to another to another and just makes it easy for me to understand. And also, most importantly, he makes these drills so fun and so fluid that I don't need to think. That way, when I'm a fighter and I'm going into a ring or a cage and I'm fighting, my actions become as if they are part of my nervous system. I don't need to think. A great a coach also has the understanding of specific tools. He knows exactly what to do with the bars. He knows what to do with the ropes. He knows if we don't have ropes, why we should need them. He knows what to do with the tractor tire. He knows exactly what to do with the TRX ropes. He knows what to do with the focus pads, with the tie pads. He knows what to do with everything that I need as a fighter, this coach can provide or make sure that I have these things in the gym. Now, this one is very important for retaining students. He gives constant feedback to each student. No student goes unnoticed. 30 people cannot train on the mat under this coach and then not ever be seen. Every 30 will have been given feedback and will have been coached so that they are better today 
than they were yesterday. Another use of this feedback is the use of tone and voice and verbal cues and auditory things that you have in a gym. For example, in a Thai gym, if you ever go to Thailand and you train in Thailand, you will hear this sound. Why do they do these weird, seemingly weird sounds? Well, they're not weird at all, actually. They are intended to get into a state of thinking and into a state of performing. And mostly, if you listen to the sounds, they're very positive. None of them are like, Ugh, ah, it's not like negative sounds. It's like positive. It sounds softer and nicer and gentler. So that's when you're smashing pads hard and you're tired as fuck. Of course, you need something positive to keep you going. And a good coach in Thailand knows that. And if you look at Western pad holders, you will see that the coaches often make the same imitations of how a Thai pad holder in Thailand sounds. As an example, look at this videos right here. This is one with a Thai coach in Thailand, and it's one with a few Thai coaches around Europe. You see, they often do the same things. Now, a good coach knows the answers to most basic questions. But a great coach has answers to almost everything. For example, when you ask your coach, what do I do with this kick or that punch or this sidestep or that counter or that submission or that takedown or how do I do my strength and conditioning or how do I cut weight for a fight? Any questions. A great coach has been in these gyms and in these areas of fighting so long that he has the answers to most of these questions. Every time you come to your coach and say, coach, how do I? He will have an answer to that. Now, this is self-explanatory, but I've seen a lot of coaches miss this one. A great coach is always present. When you just started being an instructor, it might seem to you as if these people that you are there to coach that day, you know, they just want to have a session. But you're forgetting that a lot of these are possibly the greatest in the world. I mean, the greatest in the world are created in the smallest of gyms around the world. They're made in some small little gym somewhere with a coach who cared. And a coach who cares is on time. And even if he is late, he's there all the time. He's always there. One aspect of how you can be more present is that when you are in the gym, don't let students ask for your assistance. Try to see when they need it and be present in the moment with them. If you see that they need pads, go give them pads. Don't let them ask for it. That's you not only being physically present, but also being mentally aware and present of what they need. A great coach is always truthful with his students. You can't lie to your students. You can't tell them, oh yeah, that's a great punch when it sucks. Just don't do that. Be honest with them. Anyone who comes into a gym comes in there for, to be better. So at least you can give them the respect of being honest with them when something's not working. For example, if the student is doing five things today and he's done this one and this one and this one and this one well, but he did this one not so well. You can't just today give them feedback and say, you were so good at these things, and then forget about this one. You need to tell them, hey, you did that not so well today, just so you know, but you did all of these really well. Try to work on this one. That's constructive criticism. You give both the positive and the negative. And I've seen so many coaches just give the negative. If you think people work like that, that they don't at least ever need to hear what they did well. I promise you, you're going to have students who are great, but they'll just go somewhere else. A great coach has demands for his students. You're going into a gym and you're training, okay, and you're doing well. 
but you could have done 10 times better. Why didn't you? Because you didn't have a great coach. You had a good coach. You didn't have a great coach. A great coach should be able to raise your levels. If you're at a level 10, you should be able to go to level 100. Because if that's possible for you as a person, well, the coach needs to show you that path and demand that you actually perform that way. I can tell you right now, I've never had a student that I thought could do better, that I didn't try to make them do better. I mean, what's the positive in just having a student feel good about himself and never understanding the true highs he could reach? I'll try to always tell him, hey, I think you can do 10 times better than this. Let, let's try to figure out how. A great a coach also needs to be a great instructor. I mean, the person who leads the class in terms of the round times and whatever they need to do, and also has enough physical and fighter ability to be able to show them specific techniques. Plan and execute. Write it down, write exactly every round, prepare to coach each round, and try to stick to the rounds. If you do three minute rounds with one minute break, you got 19 rounds if your session is one hour and 15 minutes. That means that you now have 19 minutes to talk in that whole session. If you do talk during the rounds, make sure to talk little and short so that they actually get to do their rounds. And make sure that whatever you plan for the session is coherent. You can't say, hey, we're going to do half of the session high kicks and then the rest of the session we're going to do kimuras. It just doesn't go together. It's just... Why would we do such a session? So make sure that it's a specific session based on a specific idea that you want them to be able to learn and perform and have drills that are great for doing that. And then just split them up into rounds and say, all right, we're going to do three rounds of Dutch boxing with hooks and lows. Done. Right. Now we're going to go from that into clinching. Right. Now we're going to go from that into learning elbows. I mean, these all go together. Now, now this one, I've seen this one, and this one can become really dangerous. You've all seen it online on YouTube. This happens all the time. If you are a great coach, you need to control how hard your students spar. I had a moment, for example, one specifically that I remember. There was two students, and one of them was absolutely a warrior. And then there was another one. It was an upcomer. He was great with his hands, so he was giving this bigger, better fighter a fight for his money. But this is sparring. This isn't a war. But the younger one was trying to challenge the bigger one. That bigger fighter, he was this close to tearing the head off of that younger fighter. And I stepped in. That big fighter would have teared his head off. And that younger fighter would have learned a lesson that he didn't need to learn in any violent way. What I did was that I went in and I reprimanded that younger fighter in front of everyone. And he did learn a lesson. It wasn't nice of him to be reprimanded in front of everyone. You as a coach, you take charge. In this gym, you don't physically challenge anyone during sparring. Sparring is just training. You leave your ego outside. If the person in front of you is better, you acknowledge it so that the person in front of you can try to raise your level to his. Easy, simple. This is a teammate. It's not an opponent. It's not a ring or a cage where we perform. Remember that. And you as a coach, take charge. A great gym trains all aspects of your fighting. This is up to professional level. As soon as you go pro, you start doing your gym work with specific strength and conditioning coaches. You start doing your wrestling with wrestlers. You start doing your boxing with boxers and so on. You diversify. You, you go to the best in each thing. But in the beginning and up to your professional level, you need a coach and a gym that trains everything. You can't just have fighting and sparring be everything that you do in a gym and then expect to be great. They do your strength and conditioning, they do your flexibility, your mobility, your, your BJJ, your wrestling, your boxing, your tie boxing, your elbows, your kicks, your knees, your fences, your tactics, your cardio, your, you know, everything. They train you in everything. 
So a great class and a great gym and great teammates, and specifically led by a great coach, knows that some students lack in certain departments and you need to be able to train them in-house in this gym. A great coach also knows how to handle your mental state. If you come in and you are low, they will raise it. If you are coming in too high and you need to be calmed down, they will calm you down a bit. Now, why is that important? Because if you're going to perform as a fighter, your coach needs to be in the ring with you or in the corner with you. And they need to know if you need to be pumped up or calmed down. That coach needs to be able to handle your mental state. Now, now finally, and perhaps most importantly, and I've had a lot of discussions with other coaches and fighters about this one. I've heard them say things like, you know, everybody can't be great. Ah, uh, you know, everybody just can't do it. Really? If that's how you think, you're nothing more than an instructor. If you want to be a great coach, you need to take the worst of the worst and make them a champion. That's on you. And remember this forever. If a student of yours failed, it is on you. It is always on you. The buck stops at the top. Remember that. Great fighters, when they come in, they don't even know they're great. You need to believe that they can be great. Now, with that said, it's up to you as a fighter to perform. There's one single thing if you want to take from this video as a fighter and not as a coach is be coachable. Because it doesn't matter how much I as a coach help you and coach you and give you all these tools. Because at the end of the day, if you don't take them on, we're not learning. Nothing is working. A prime example of that is when I say jump, you jump. You don't fucking ask questions. You jump. If you want to ask questions, you do it after the session, not in the middle. If I say, hey, how do you do this armbar? Well, this is how you do it. And I answer, don't say, well, what if, what if, what if? And they pl then play the what if game with me for 15 minutes and ruin the whole session. No, you be coachable. And if I say the best way to win this fight is by low kicking him, trust your coach and low kick the shit out of him in the fight. Don't do what I made a mistake of doing when I was younger and my coach said, hey, this is the Swedish championships. You go and win this fight by doing this and this. And you, you know what I did? I did the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah, at least I know I did it. <laughs> you don't make the same mistakes. You be coachable. And most importantly, you be on time. I hope you got something from this video. If you like this video, you watch this one or this one. If you want to subscribe, you subscribe up here and I'll see you guys next time. Until then, as I always say, train hard, fight easy.